Hello, everyone, and welcome to Try This at Dot Work. My name is Kelly Cleveland. I'm a customer success manager here at Microsoft, um, and really happy to have you join us today to talk about app templates. I'm also joined by my uh, partner in crime on Try This at Work, Scott Rendell. He's a partner technical architect. Um, and He's here to help me today facilitate the Q&A. Uh, so just some quick housekeeping notes and then we'll go ahead and get started because we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Um, so just to let everybody know, this is a, a public live event. Um, so we do not in any way, shape, or form capture or use your data in any which way. Um, privacy and security is of our utmost concern. Even if you have authenticated through Office 365 today, please know that we are not, um, even if we may have your email by chance, um, we are not using it and will not use it in any way, shape, or form. With that out of the way, um, as always, please feel free to submit your questions throughout the event. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so again, for today, I am going to be facilitating again today's demo showcase. Uh, these app templates that Microsoft has available to you. So if you go out and you search for Microsoft Teams app templates, um, as you can see on the screen here, there are just a plethora of templates that are available to you for immediate use. Um, most of them uh, link out to a GitHub. They tell you all about the requirements. If there's you know any custom connectors that for, that would incur additional cost. Um, a lot of these are actually free where you're not incurring additional costs that should be able to use those under your base licensing. Uh, but you can see here, there's over 50 app templates available right now. Um, I'm going to be covered 11 of them. I know that's a weird number, but <laughs> I just, I only have so much time and some of these are really quick. So um, I thought that for today, covering um, an adoption bot, which is still an app, adoption bot, ask away, bulletins, which is brand new, um, co company communicator, which, you know, it's kind of an alternate, um, you know, option to bulletins, but bulletins is new and super cool. So I wanted to make sure at least give you both options. Um, also uh, employee ideas, inspections, issue reporting, milestones, which is also another new one, um, reflect, which is really great in this day and age of COVID. Uh, we're going to be covering survey and visitor management again, which is another great, um, you know, as we like to say, is we're all going to be transitioning back to the physical space in some way. Uh, you know, visitor management is something that's top of mind for everyone um, as we want to control the people flow in and out of the buildings. So with that um, and without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and switch over here and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm not while I'm doing this, I'm not actually going to be um, sh showing you the setup of any of these apps today. What we're focused on today is just you being able to see these apps and to understand what's available to you and what that interaction is like from an end user standpoint. So just know all of the instructions are out there. It walks you through step by step in each of the deployment guides and tells you exactly what you need to have and what you need to do. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with the adoption bot. So I actually already have this app um, pinned up here in the left rail um, of my user, um, Miss Adele here in the Contoso tenant. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this adopt bot and let's go ahead and get started with this. So uh, what's great about this adoption bot is that basically it's a power virtual agent, um, but what's good about this one is if any of you are familiar with FAQ Plus, um, this is basically the alternative um, or the power virtual agent version of FAQ plus. Um, what I love is that the adoption bot answers, you know, 100 plus questions about Microsoft 365 and Teams. Um, so it's really easy to get started. Um, so I can just say, type in something here, uh, create a team. All right, and the bot's gonna get back to me and it's gonna say, okay, um, basically it's gonna tell me how I can join or create a team. Um, and then it's going to say, you know, it's looking at that repository of information. Do you need additional help? I'm going to say no. Uh, that was great. Um, and it's basically going to come back here and just say end. Um, feel free to ask additional questions or type in escalate or any time for expert help. Um, you can also type in um, actually chat as well. 
Uh, and um, you have the option basically uh, to ask an expert, right? So when I click on this, you're going to see here, it's going to be a title for my request. Um, I'm just going to say um, template creation and enter description. Okay, I cannot find info on how to create templates. Okay, and we're gonna see here what's gonna come back. Okay, so now this has been shared with the related experts, which is basically, um, we'll see here in just a minute. So this is actually in this case, right, instead of going to IT, it's actually, these escalations are going to the M365 champions team. Um, so now it's acknowledging, share the question, um, and, uh, you know, I can proceed to ask additional questions. Again, submit feedback. Um, oh, well, here, uh, if I type in something like it doesn't recognize <laughs> Yahoo, <laughs> wouldn't recognize that. Um, so it'll keep having me try, but basically at some point, I'm not going to go through this. It'll say, I'm sorry. Um, do you want to submit feedback? And I have the option to submit the feedback basically saying it hasn't addressed my question. And that is also going to go into the team essentially to be taken into consideration and, and baked out and built out um, for the bot. So now if I go ahead and I go over um, into my teams um, and I go into the um, champions team here, you can see here, um, and obviously I'm Adele and I'm, I'm looking at Adele here, but not the point, <laughs> just know that Generally, this would go to a group of people, obviously, that are the M365 champions. And now it's basically that flow kicked off and it has this card here that says exactly what the issue is. And now I have the opportunity, obviously, to um, go ahead and chat with, with Adele. Now, clearly, I'm Adele, so it's not acting um, properly. But that basically is um, the adoption bot. You also have the option as well, which is something else that's really popular um, for adoption, is the M63. M365 learning pathways. Um, so basically here, you know, clearly this is a SharePoint site. Um, it's wrapped up inside of an app and it's pinned into the left rail to make, um, again, trying to make adoption easy, trying to help users find information quickly that they need. So really it just depends on end user experience. Do you want them to go out and kind of sift through content and find their own information? Or do you want to make it really easy for them and just set up a bot basically that can help answer their questions and then also you know, you you were kind of from an IT perspective offloading um, and it's reinforcing basically there's a champions team supporting the organization and the questions. All right, with that, we're gonna move on. Um, so now the next app we're gonna be, um, that I'm gonna be highlighting is the Ask Away, uh, which is actually also a Teams bot. And this one is actually used to conduct um, Q&A sessions within Teams. Uh, so what's nice about this one is basically team members can both um, submit questions and upvote questions. Um, basically to gather all questions, so for example, if you have an all hands type event, um, you know, CEO connection event, whatever the case may be, you have the ability essentially to do a crowdsourcing of questions and then um, actually have peers, right, colleagues that are actually upvoting the questions um, that really, you know, are top of mind for, for most colleagues that you should pull out and address during the actual event. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, this is an app again. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you here. So this is Ask Away. So once you would actually have this set up. Um, in this case, uh, you have some options here with Ask Away. So you have the option to add Ask Away to a team, right, to a channel, add to a chat, and add to a meeting. In this case, um, I'm going to go ahead and just add it to a chat. And I already have a sales team chat um, that is set up here. And you can see now it's clearly it's prompting me to start a session to start gathering questions on Ask Away. I'm not going to do that and go through it, but basically you're going to see here I had already previously um, had posted a question here and you can see March All Hands. Um, please submit your questions. And Adele here had previously asked, what's our marketing strategy for launching XR56? Um, and you can see that there's an option to um, ask a question. Uh, so we can add an additional question that can be upvoted and then also um, upvote questions. Uh, so you can see here these now clearly I'm Adele and it was Adele that had submitted. Um, but if I flip over here, I'll just show you really quick on the upvote. Oops, got to go to chat, not my teams. 
Um, I'll go ahead and click upvote here. So I just flip to my, my admin view here um, and you'll just see that I can, I just upvoted that um, and then I can just end my session. Um, and if I just, now you can see there that that upvote, when I flip back to Adele into this, um, this persona, you can now see that that was upvoted. Uh, so really great way, again, crowdsourcing questions. All right, moving on because we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Um, so now uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to cover bulletins. So bulletins is brand new. Uh, it's a sample app that's in preview right now. And um, basically bulletins is a great alternative to company and communicator, which I'm going to show you next. But what I like about bulletin is that it provides a central location for essentially all of your company like essentially for corporate communications where they can be post broadcasts, memos, announcements, news, press releases, honestly, whatever it is that, that you may need. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna go ahead um, and go into uh, my Contoso team here and I'm just gonna show you Bulletin. So again, this is an app that's already been added. There's actually two versions of it here. So you have Bulletins, which is actually the user view of those bulletins and then you have manage bulletins um, which is essentially where you're creating the bulletin so i'm going to show you from a user perspective first so here's adele and basically stay up to date this is everything that's happening in the org that is pertinent to adele so these are the communications or bulletins that that adele has received so you can see here there's customer updates employee resources um, you know, mandatory training, um, all kinds of stuff for her to stay informed um, and content that is important to her. There's also FAQs um, that can be added as well. And then um, also links and contacts. So if you have websites or um, individual contacts that you want to post here for bulletins on how to get more information, um, you can do that as well. So I'm going to quickly flip to manage bulletins. Again, we're, we've got a lot to get through in just a short amount of time. Let this load up. Oh, we should click that guy. Okay, so this is actually where you would draft your bulletins. So right now, these are the drafted bulletins um, that you're seeing right now. Well, there's, these aren't actually drafts. These are published. But any draft bulletins, essentially, that I created. So if I created a new bulletin, like I'm going to do here, right? So I can specify the category and I'll show you how you can update these in just in just a moment. Um, you can specify, do I want to make it featured and how long do I want to make it featured? Do I want to schedule this or do I want to immediately publish it? Um, I can add a cover image. I can add a video URL. Um, I can basically give this a title, a subtitle, um, you know, add in basically um, the, the article or the content. Um, I can even add a button, um, URL for the button, and also add an author. So essentially, right, it's just like posting an online article. And then I can basically even select a ready for review, essentially. So, right, generally when these corporate communications is rolling out, they typically have one person that develops and one or more people that are reviewing it. Um, so that option is available as well. Um, I'm not actually going to do that. So obviously you have the option to save it. And then you can, of course, go back once somebody's reviewed it and then that individual can publish it. So um, with that, again, uh, you also have um, any of the FAQs here. Um, again, so any potential questions that come in or any categories that you want to add or new FAQs, this is where you're going to do it. Links and contacts, this is where you manage this as well. Add link, add contact, edit these. And then the last thing I want to show you is just from a settings perspective, um, this is where you would add bulletin categories, right? You can delete them, you can edit them, you can add categories, same for FAQ, same for link categories. So essentially, it's fully customizable um, and it, it really does. It looks very nice, um, you know, in terms of the view. So I just I think that this is a great alternative um, to the company communicator and a great way to get information out to your employees. Now, I'm going to switch over and I'm actually going to go back to my um, I'm going to go back to my admin view here. Goes out of the sky. And now we're going to talk um, about company communicator. So this is the Contoso communicator, company communicator. And you can see here this, um, you know, instead of essentially um, giving me sort of uh, targeted content, for example, inside of a team of what's really pertinent to me and what I need to focus on, um, company communicator is something that essentially that pushes out um, to every single employee. Oh, you can, well, with company communicator, you can push it to um, multiple teams. You can 
push it to a, a subset of employees. You can push it out to all employees. Um, essentially, you can define what employees this needs to reach. Um, and obviously, this also covers um, a ton of different scenarios, right? This could be announcements. This could be onboarding. This could be um, learning and development. Um, these could be org wide broadcasts. Um, you can see here, right? There's just there's a number of announcements here more. A number of announcements as well. So be um, it's it's being commonly used as well for tips and tricks uh, as it relates to adoption. Um, and again, announcements of upcoming, right? Uh, de announcements of deployments that are actually happening in your organization. So with that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how we actually create these. Um, so under Corp Comms here, I actually have the company communicator, right? So this would be my team, right? Corp Comms, of course, that is managing these communications. So you can see here right now, this is everything that's in draft right now um, in terms of a post um, and then everything that's been sent. And you can see how many recipients it's been sent to. Um, and uh, basically all of the details about this particular um, post. So uh, for example here, um, you can see uh, when did this actually send? When did it complete? How long did it take? Um, did it reach everyone? Uh, and, and you can essentially see here the details of what was actually sent. Um, for these, uh, you can see here that I have the option to send them, preview in a channel, edit, duplicate, delete. Um, and then, of course, I have the ability to create a new um, communication that's going to be broadcast out. Um, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that for the sake of there's plenty of drafts and I think you get the gist. Um, so obviously, just, um, you know, determine from a corporate com perspective, what's the best way to communicate out information? And maybe it's a combination of bulletins and company communicator. All right, so moving on, um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and flip back to Adele here. Um, next thing that we're going to cover is Employee Ideas app. Um, so this Employee Ideas app, it's probably pretty self-explanatory, but just to cover it. Um, so right, this is essentially for um, uh, for someone to set up and configure an idea campaign, right? So maybe there's a theme, right? Um, so sales themes for your next fiscal, for example. Um, so basically, this allows you to create campaigns and um, to uh, have individuals, essentially your, your crowdsourcing and, and gathering ideas from the individuals based off of those campaigns. Um, and you can see all of the ideas that are posted. You can see what ideas were the most liked um, and you can see how you're performing on those campaigns. OK, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and go into this Mark 8 project team and I have an employees tab that is set up here. And again, this is just an app that you would find in the app store that you've published for your company um, that would be available for you to add to your teams. Yep, the little pop up keeps coming up. OK, so here we go. So this is what it looks like. So this is my um, employee ideas tab. So you see here, um, so this is the management of the campaigns. Um, so you can see here, who are my top contributors? Uh, you know, weekly top ideas in terms of upvote voting. There's not that very many votes there, um, but obviously you get the gist. Um, and then here are any of my campaigns. So for example, this is a campaign for in-person meetings. Um, if you had a lot of them, you could search on them. You could see all active expired and not started. Um, I can add a campaign. Um, so, you know, uh, just like I talked about, I mean, you can see here there's a lot of information um, that you're that you can capture. Um, so you can just say uh, fiscal theme, for example, give it a description. How long is this campaign going to go on? Um, you know, you have the ability essentially to give some idea questions and some instructions, um, post it to post it to the channel because um, you may just want to save it in draft mode. Um, again, I'm not going to, you can even give it a cover image. Um, I personally like things that have pictures. Everybody thinks, you know, anything that's a visual tends to draw people in. Um, so I always personally encourage that. Um, I'm not actually going to create this campaign um, because you clearly you can see what one looks like right here. Um, but in addition to that, so again, create these campaigns. Um, I'll show you in a second what that actually looks like. Um, but then from a setting perspective, obviously you can manage campaigns. There are uh, some settings in here from a permissions perspective. And then obviously which which um, app channel where you want the messages to be posted. 
Um, so in this case here, um, you can see all of the um, all of the ideas that have been uh, submitted. Um, so it's it's uh, this is just a nice, great way again to capture employee ideas and um, you know again from a crowdsourcing perspective. Uh, you know, everyone likes to contribute, so I think that it is definitely one that you should consider. All right, so now moving on again, um, we are going to go to inspections. Um, so this is actually a super cool app. These these next couple I think are just amazing um, personally. So I'm going to go into my um, this is in this case, right? You're kind of seeing this a ma manufacturing um, demo tenant here. Um, so I'm going to go into inspections here and I am going to go into first the inspection tab. Now, obviously, I have inspections, managing inspections um, to group together here. Clearly, those that are managing probably aren't doing the actual inspections, um, but just for the sake of the demo and streamlining this, we're keeping it together. OK, so but clearly, again, this is a scenario where there's two parts to the app. You're managing and you're actually it's for the end user to actually submit an, an inspection. So this one's pretty cool. So I want to take an extra minute to actually um, show this to you. So again, good evening, Adele, right? So that's my um, demo persona here. And you can see here, I actually have um, some open tasks. It's going to actually um, show that in Planner. I actually have it pinned, um, so you don't actually have to do that. Um, I'm not going to show you that, because I'll show you that actually when we get to issue reporting as well. It's very similar. Um, and then this week at a glance, it actually tells me, um, have I done any inspections? Um, just for the sake of actually showing you this um, and what this looks like, I definitely want to walk through one of these with you. Um, so you can actually add tags according to, for example, um, if it's location. Uh, so here you can see we have some plants and we have some uh, you know, shop floor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select that one for this particular plant. OK, so for this plant, this is actually an inspection of the shop floor. And um, it's basically, it's a checklist of items essentially that I have to review. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click begin inspection. And I have clearly, it's a snapshot of, hey, this is really what I should be seeing. Um, is it clean and hygienic? Okay, um, yes, it looks great. I can also add a photo. Um, so you can see here, and obviously on a mo right on the mobile device, this, this looks, um, you know, uh, it's all of this is mobile friendly that I'm showing you every single one of these apps. Um, I can add a note here um, and I can also add a task, um, which essentially would be an immediate task that would be pushed um, essentially to task by planner. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm just going to say OK. And then safety and eyewash station, um, I'm, you know, I can say, hey, there's actually there's an issue here and I can include a note to say uh, not working. Um, save my notes and I can go ahead and review my inspection. So it's going to give me an update, issue noted, all looks good, and I'm going to go ahead and submit. Um, so now um, it's actually not going to take a while. <laughs> you can see that that was really fast. Um, so I have submitted my inspection. Essentially, you can see how this would apply to so many different, especially for those industries and um, customer, especially where safety is a concern. If you're in retail, things have to look a certain way. Uh, there's just so many different ways that you can leverage this app. OK, so from a management perspective, um, just to show you how this actually gets set up. So I'm going to take give this a second to let it load. And I'm sorry that I'm talking fast, but we just have so many to get through. And this is really just a this is a showcase, um, not necessarily a how to because, again, all that information is out there. OK, so you can see here I have all of my locations. Um, so I have the ability to add a location. So give it a location name, give it a location type. I have the ability to manage my location type. So what's actually in that drop down, edit a picture, like if I want to actually add a picture. Um, I also have, oops, cancel that, my inspection insights. So basically this is giving me some really great, I think, um, management information, um, just a quick snapshot, essentially summary of the metrics around the inspections and then the inspections forms. So these inspection forms are actually um, what you're creating. Like, so what are the tasks that they need to do? What are they inspecting? Um, what are they improving? So, right, I can say new inspection form. I can give it a title. I can specify which location. I can add a step here. Um, and you can see just how easy this is. This is not something that's complicated. Any business user should be able to um, create uh, essentially these inspection forms. 
Um, so I'm not actually going to create one, um, but you can see just how easy it is. Any action buttons that I need to specify, again, adding a picture, which personally, I think if you're inspecting, you should have a sample picture. Um, so again, this is where you can create a new um, inspection form, and then you also have the ability to edit existing inspection form. So for example, if something has changed with um, you know, plant 133, I can go in here and I can actually edit this so you can see all the checklist steps, all the reference images. I can even duplicate this. Um, again, if there's something very similar that you need to do um, inside of plant 133, but it's, you know, aligned to something else and I just need to swap out some pictures. Um, again, add a step, whatever the case may be that you need essentially to build out your inspection form. And then if I go into settings, again, same type of settings apply here. Uh, team owner restricted, I can specify the channel. Um, and then of course it has an attached planner. Here's all your location types. Um, so you can edit those. Um, if there's grouped locations and then um, customizing your actual experience. So you can select the type of work. Is this an inspection? Is it an audit? Is it a walk? A walk, for example, through a retail store. Um, so again, really fully customizable, really fantastic app. They did a great job on this one. All right, so moving on, we are going to issue reporting and you can see that I'm going in alphabetical order. Okay, so with the case with this, um, I'm gonna stay here, um, rate and plant operations, and I'm just going to go to issue reporting. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch this. And this is again, pretty self-explanatory. This is a, a way for you to manage any issues. Um, and then obviously have somebody manage those issues. So in this case, um, you know, here's Adele. Uh, I can view my issues, which I'll show you the planner here in just a minute. Like I said, I would. How many issues I've submitted, just a snapshot. But I'm gonna go ahead and say um, that I'm going to report an issue. And oops, I can select um, an actual issue type here. So I select issue type and basically, um, you know, when we go into manage issues, you're going to you're going to see that you're going to have the ability to create categories and you're going to have the ability to create issues. But essentially, right, I can sort of drill down into here and I'm going to say, you know, bathroom cleanliness. Um, I could even um, I could assign a person if I actually wanted to, if I knew the person. In most cases, they don't. Um, I could just say uh, building. 33, I could give it a description. Um, is there concern for public health, public safety, um, which bathroom, um, you know, stall four, floor four, um, women's. And I can go ahead and submit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just say return home. Obviously the person that is submitting an issue is not going to be the one that's um, managing those um, setting the setting these setting up the issues that you're seeing nor um, probably addressing the issues well maybe they might be managing and issue tracking but you can see here essentially um once you once a user submits an issue what it does is it actually pushes that task directly into task by planner where someone can pick these up and they can manage them. So they can be assigned to an individual. Um, you can obviously, you know, label them. There's a ton that you can do um, inside of task task um, planner. So that's a whole other subject. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip over to manage issues, um, but just know it's really easy to track those issues um, and you have all that in, in one place. Um, that's also easy, um, you know, from a historical perspective, there's, there's lots of reporting reports that you can pull with those as well. Um, so here's manage issues. So essentially, again, giving you some really great insights, how long issues have been overdue, really great snapshot. Um, and then from an issue templates perspective, I'm just going to click over here. Settings are pretty much the same as what we reviewed for inspections. But you can see here the different categories. I can move these categories up and down just like inspections. Um, you can see here the different issue templates. I have the ability to add more to edit, etc. cetera. Uh, so Again, super easy, really great way to manage issues and so super easy. All right, so we are moving on to milestones. Um, so now under milestones um, here, I'm gonna go to, oh, where am I going? Oh, project managers. I forgot what I was doing. Okay, um, so whoops, oops, planning. All right, so milestones, this is another new one. So milestones is basically a great way to keep track of projects and initiatives. Um, and in a very business friendly way. So there are some views that actually Task for Planner gives you, but not quite like this milestone view. So you can see here, um, again, I just have this set up as a tab. 
Um, if I had multiple projects running, I could see all of the projects. Um, I can create a new project directly from here. I could find a project. I'm just going to collapse this guy by clicking the hamburger. And then um, what I can see here is that I have all of my milestone status for my upcoming project. There are certain milestone tags that are associated to these work items, categories. I can assign priority. I can assign to individuals. Milestones usually aren't assigned to individuals. It's the it's the actual um, actual tasks themselves. But if I want, if if someone is like overarching, um, there's an owner for that milestone. I can assign it to somebody again. What the status is and what my target date is. Um, and then there's also a roll up um, based off of how you're progressing against each of these tasks. Uh, so really great way, very visual dashboard, especially for management um, to be able to see a great view of how you're progressing without looking at Microsoft Project Gantt charts and all of those types of views. Um, you have the ability to create a theme around this. And again, from a settings perspective, um, Oops, I don't know why I gave that air. Oh, well, well, resolved. It's magic. Okay. And then for on your settings, clearly you have the ability to define your milestones, color, um, dates around those. So here's your global settings for status priority category. Um, again, great way to just customize um, if you already have a color system and naming convention in place, just update it with all of your stuff. Okay. Um, so for reflect. Um, so I love Reflect. Um, so this is a great way. Um, basically, this is a Microsoft Teams messaging extension app. Um, so it's a great way basically to help capture um, colleagues' state of well-being um, and to get essentially get a pulse on your workforce um, that can be submitted anonymously or, or um, you know, with, with, um, with users actually attached to it. Um, so I'll just show you how easy it is to do this. So again, I already have this app loaded. Um, so here's Reflect. And basically, it's going to come up and it's going to say, um, so obviously from a management standpoint, have the option um, to, to basically add questions, potential questions. Um, you know, so how are you feeling? I can, it could send right now. I could give it um, a specific date um, and time that it, time that it's actually going to go. Um, and then a recurrence, if I want to specify that. There, again, there's a, a custom option there. Um, I'm just going to say does not repeat. And then I have the ability to go ahead and um, I'm just going to say confirm. You're all set. This is when it's scheduled for. And I'm just going to go ahead and send. It'll automatically actually pop up. So this is actually what it looks like. Um, so you can see here, how is your work-life balance this week? Um, and you can basically pick which one. Um, and you're going to see here, you know, now, uh, uh, you know, my, my response is Adele. Um, again, there are settings here. In this case, um, the setting that I had specified was essentially to display names, but this is, can completely be anonymous. Um, so just know that you have the option to do that as well. All right. Um, so uh, survey app is the next one. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to stay right here. Um, and you're going to see I have another app loaded. Um, and again, this is another men messaging extension app that has gives me the ability to create a survey in a chat or a channel, um, basically to gather any type of data that I might need. Um, what day should we have our weekly meeting? Right. Um, so then I have the ability to add a question. Um, well, I guess. OK. Weekly meeting. And then I can just repeat that here. I can add each of my choices. Again, there's multiple answers. You can make this required, um, uh, you know, duplicate question. And just if it's very similar, and then you can just um, do quick edits. I can delete it. Again, I can add a question. You can see here, multi-choice rating, text, number, date. Um, you can also schedule. So this says due in one week, results visible to everyone. Again, fully customizable, um, just like on the Reflect. Essentially, you can set it up to behave how you want. Um, and then I have the ability basically to um, uh, to post this. Um, next, send anyway, um, and send. All right, so you can see here, there's clearly nothing here, but you can see just how easy that was to send. Um, so you can take the survey, I can view results. 
um, on this as well. So again, these reflect survey customizable when you're setting them up essentially, um, you know, as administrators are kind of controlling what, what the behavior is there. All right, last one, because I am out of time is visitor management. Okay, so I already set up this app. It's pins in my left rail, um, you know, because at some point we're all going to be, um, you know, in a hybrid state, potentially back on site at a location. I think uh, managing visitor requests are going to be of the utmost importance. So with this, you can see here it just popped open in, um, the app and it says I already have some existing visitor requests that are sitting out there. So this one's been actually confirmed by the administrator and this one is still pending. They have not approved this visitor request yet. Um, but you can see here it's really easy for me to create a visitor request. So locations get set up on the back end. Um, Right, I can just um, enter in all this information. Right, I can call this ABC firm. I can specify the arrival time and, and um, purpose of the visit. I'm, just, I'm not going to continue with this just because of the sake that we're short on time here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to switch over, right, because I actually want you to, to see what this actually looks like. Um, so I'm going to go to this visitor managers team right here. And you're going to see what this actually looks like. So essentially, it kicks off a flow. So once that form actually gets submitted for a visitor coming, um, basically your visitor managers or your admin, whoever the case may be, right? Clearly, you define it. Um, and a request comes in, and it gives you all of the information. And then I have the ability to confirm that. And then once it's confirmed, obviously that card gets updated. But then I have a visitor management app on this as well. So again, twofold. Um, on the um, on the visitors, uh, you've got the visitor, like essentially the end user, and then you have the visitor from a management perspective. So right now there's no request it's saying for this day, um, but you can create a request. For example, if there is somebody that walks in, you want to track every single visitor. So now you can create an, um, that um, an administrator or visitor manager can, can create an on-the-fly request. They also have the ability to create, uh, or excuse me, to review by clicking this upcoming tab. Um, if there's a lot of visitors, they can sort by name, they can do a search. Um, again, they can create a new from here, but you can see here now, both those requests actually came in from Adele and they were confirmed. Now, um, based off of these dates, they're tomorrow. Um, but when it became time, I actually would have the ability to notify the host. So I could just click this little bell. Essentially, what it's going to do is it's going to kick off an adaptive card that's going to go back to Adele to say, hey, your visitor is here. Um, they're checked in. Please come get them. All right, everyone. And with that, unfortunately, <laughs> we did not actually have time for questions because I always try to cram too much into these sessions, um, but I hope it was really valuable today. If you have any questions, please do feel free to reach 